Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Maven Nation podcast. Today we have professional wedding photographer Scott Drexler. Works on Maui. Do you work on other islands as well? I have done some jobs on other islands and on the, on the, the big, big island of the you know, uh, continental U.S. Um, and down in uh, the Caribbean a little bit. But Maui's, Maui's my home. I'm lucky that I get to go home to my own pillow and my own bed every night <laughs> yeah. and to my, my, my loving wife and our daughter. And so it's, it's home. It's awesome. Maui's incredible. Scott is very well known on Maui as a wedding as far as I know from the people I've talked to. First, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, Michael the Maven. If you guys are interested in supplementing your camera gear with a paracord camera strap, I use them for my tripods, for my light stands, my secondary strap, I use it on my gear bag. We have all different colors. Check out the links below. Today's a very special episode because we're going to be talking about how this camera, the Canon RP, is about to revolutionize the wedding industry, and we don't even know it yet. I think Canon, recently they've been playing some games. I don't know if you've seen the videos. They took out the hot shoe pin on some of the lower end cameras. There was, uh, you know, they cripple the video features on this camera. We're, you know, we're not going to talk so much about video features, yeah. but... This is not a super great video camera because the 24 frames per second is missing. We saw that on the M50. The executives came out and even said, yeah, we took out dual pixel autofocus for 4K. So Canon does a lot of little games like this to make us want to upgrade. But I posted a video recently talking about why the Canon RP is a home run. And I wanted to bring in Scott because he is a professional and he has been using this now for how many weeks? Probably two months. Two months. Yeah. We had a conversation about two months ago. Yeah. And what was what were the questions you had for me? I wish you guys could have been there and, and heard this conversation. It was about an hour long. Mm -hmm. And we sat and just talked gear. And what were your concerns? What were you thinking? Uh, really just quality. I mean, you are stickler for knowing specs and quality and, and knowing if it's up to snuff with the 5D Mark III that I've been shooting for years. Tell us about your gear setup when you go out yeah. and shoot. I, I typically shoot with... Um, uh, Two camera setup with a, a, a wide angle on a telephoto long lens. What are those lenses? 24 to 70, or sometimes I rock the 16 to 35, yeah. and then jump right to the 70 to 200. Do, is, do you have one lens that's always 70 to 200, or do you switch up between the three lenses? Yeah, I kind of switch. Do you carry that extra lens with you? The third lens? I ca usually carry it in a roller bag with me, kind okay. of off offset a little bit. So you have a dual camera setup. Yep. And so you're shooting wide and then more telephoto mm -hmm. depending on the lens. Yep, okay. always too. How long are your shoots? Here on Maui, we do, uh, I do 99% destination weddings. And so it's smaller groups, at least always two people, mm -hmm. but usually up to 50 to 100 is a kind of a big size. And so it's really, you know, um, a little bit of prep before a ceremony, ceremony, and then um, some portraits afterwards with a little sunset action to kind of conclude and then they go off to dinner two of them or a small group will go off to dinner and so my my gigs are usually two hours there are some threes there's some sixes there's some one hours and so it's really a, a more about quantity or mm -hmm. doing doing a, a high volume i usually do about three a week wow that many yeah so you're so you're you're there, there, that brings up a lot of important questions about workflow. Hopefully, we'll talk about workflow and how, why it's so important. Yeah. How long have you been shooting for um, as a pro, full-time? Over 10 years. Over 10 years. Yeah, and before that, I did 10 years as a wedding videographer. Um, so I've been in the industry for over two decades and kind of seen a lot of, lot of changes in our industry. And um, I'm lucky enough to still be going and being relevant. So I'm, I'm super thankful for that. Scott is one of the more happy, positive, cheerful people to be around. We met at CrossFit. Yep. We work out and he's always in a good mood, high energy. If I get married here on Maui, which would, I don't know what I should, I probably should get married here on Maui, right? This is the spot. This is my guy. Yeah, bro. Be my honor. So we're, we're going to get all your social media, your yep. email, we'll cool. put that up. Those will be in the links in the description below. So what happened that made you want to get away or at least consider changing? We have his gear bag. I'll take a picture and show you the, the gear he has. Show us some of the gear that you were using. 5D Mark III with a grip. Do you have that or? I don't have any grips on. But you did. But I did. I, I like to build, I got big hands. I'm 6'2", 200 pounds, kind of big guy like you. And so I like to go in, in, in a vertical and have that, that grip. I like that. The way my straps are, it didn't 
hang nicely on it. So I kind of went away from it. Um, and, and certainly when I was kind of thinking about going to this RP setup, um, I, I took the grips off just to make sure I could kind of hold that form factor a little smaller camera. Um, but yeah, I, sh I shoot with, so with after these, this is what I've been shooting, these guys. So as a wedding photographer, and it, I mean, it's funny now because I, we have the, I have the RP here, even with the, the 24 to 105 lens, which is with a heavier lens, it feels so much heavier. Right, it's sudden. thick, it's thick and... And you had the battery grip with, yep. that had two batteries, and so it was significantly heavy, and you were carrying yeah. two of them. You know, just the weight hanging your shoulders, the mental fatigue that you were helping me diagnose yep. um, and so um, I wanted to make it simpler and lighter and feel more um, more energetic and creative on my feet and so that was one of the big pushes for me to go mirrorless I just wanted to get that weight off of me it was a weight thing that was a little like bit yeah I mean there were so many reasons I, I like it mm -hmm. but weight was certainly pretty high on the list the thing that he's talking about, the fatigue, is something that it's I, real. That it's I, real. <laughs> it's a total thing that wedding photographers experience. I call it decision fatigue, mm. because you're making so many decisions that that requires a certain amount of mental energy every time you do that. And so, on top of the stress in and of itself, you have the camera settings, remembering everybody's names, composing light, you know, the events of the day. It wears you out. Yeah. It really does, and especially if you're doing, like I would shoot Saturdays, I'd have the whole week to recover. You're doing it every couple of days. What were some of the other concerns you had about the RP? The RP is a fairly new camera. It's light, it's very small. What were your concerns going into it? The concerns of battery life was a- How has that been for you? Not a problem. Have you run out on a shoot yet? I, I you know, have four, I have two backup. I shoot two bodies and I have an extra battery for each one. And on a big job, I will bring a, a couple more. I'll have one extra for each one. So this was one of my concerns, yep. and this is one of the things I wanted to find out. This is LP17, something like that. And it's smaller, fewer shots than the bigger uh, batteries we see in other wedding cameras, like the 5D Mark III, the 5D Mark IV. So this was a concern, but Scott was shooting fairly short weddings, and I'm like, I don't think it's mm. going to be a problem. No. When the R came out, I did a lot of tests of the R and I was disappointed with it. I've gotten a lot of flack from it. And the, my problem was the eye detection was single focus. Tell us about your experience with, it. we want to know the good and bad. If, you, if there's something you don't like, we also want to know that. But what, what is your, has been your experience with eye detection? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Um, I'd say the hardest part is being able to quickly go through the settings to get to it. Yeah, I noticed that. It would be nice to have a quick eye, eye focus. That'd be crazy button. cool. Like if just it, you push it in, it boom, engages. That would be insane. We have that on some of the other cameras. Was switching over to Sony or another system like that ever a consideration? And if so, why not? Or why? Uh, I, I liked how the colors look in Canon, and I felt <laughs> like they would they would they would come across nicely and and be able. You know, at yeah. first I was like how much do I shoot this? And, and mm -hmm. certainly at big events, I still have one or two of these in my bag. Yep. Just as, you know, like a, a safety blanket for me. They would match. They would match. The color I've sense. never brought it out of the bag. Interesting. So in two months of shooting, so we had our conversation. You went out, you went home that day or the day after and ordered two yep. Canon RPs. Yep. And what you're saying is you have not shot with the 5D Mark III since. Not once. Are you thinking you ever think you'll go back to them or you want to have them as backups or what? I do a little bit of video work. Um, and it, it's action kiteboarding video. Right. And so I think um, I will utilize that for this and a little bit of sport, you know, then I'll shoot stills. And I think just the, the faster frame rate or yep. frames per second, yeah. I'll, I'll enjoy that for kiting. Um, but I, I kind of like to try to shoot it on the RP and just see what I get yeah. and be like, you know what, that's, that's pretty good. So I'll have three of these for sale pretty soon, probably. You <laughs> so know, you guys want to buy a <laughs> yeah. Canon 5E Mark III? Yeah, yeah, I got three of them. Thanks, Scott. Yep. What are the lenses you you're shooting with on the RP? And are you adapting, or do you have native lenses? That's a great point. You know, the 51.2 um, is such a staple in wedding yep. photography. Yep. And I've always had kind of a love hate relationship with this this <laughs> lens. Tell us why. You know, it's just. Focus, having tack sharp focus wide open. You shoot wide open on it, 1.2? I shoot everything at wide open, and that's kind of my style. Um, but I 
wasn't getting really good results at one two on this. Interesting point. Why not? Tell us, tell us the tell the photographers who don't shoot at one point two why it's so hard to get, for example, an eyeball in focus. Yeah, it's at ridiculous because just you know, just depressing the shutter, you're moving the camera just enough yep. that you don't, you're not staying on that exact point that you want to maintain the sharpest focus on. So how is that different on the RP? I, you know, with the eye detection, it's super rad. It's super cool. But I also think that there's some kind of like magic dust that they put into the RP that just brings life to these lenses mm -hmm. that somehow they communicate better. So you're adapting over your old Canon EF lenses. All of them, yeah. You, you didn't get any native lenses for it? Uh, Canon just announced today. Was it today or this morning? The 85 1.2. Saw that. You saw that? It's a beast. Twenty six ninety nine. Right. Twenty seven hundred dollars. There is a. There's the Holy Trinity that's coming. The tw the seventy to two hundred native for the RF mount. The twenty four to seventy two point eight, and then the sixteen to thirty five. Mm. I think it's a two point eight. So, in terms of the lens game, Canon is going full board. They're going to be caught up. I would say within a couple of years, probably with. Sony, who's been pumping out G Master lenses like crazy. So Sony or uh, Canon is definitely committed. The native lenses are coming. I think they're really expensive, but I, you know, I shoot with this 24 to 105. It is a super sharp lens. It's heavy, it's a bigger lens. You know, you don't get a lot of weight savings from this over the old 24 to mm -hmm. 105, but the performance of it is astonishingly, I think, better. It's mm -hmm. sharper. Mm -hmm. So you know, just listening to you talk about your transition, if somebody wanted to get into the wedding photography game, up until recently, if you wanted to shoot full frame, you could go with a 6D. You would, you'd be limited in your focusing square coverage. But typically, most wedding photographers that I know, they're going 5D Mark III or 5D Mark IV. Mm -hmm. Those cameras are bigger, they're heavier, they're more expensive. And so the question that a lot of our viewers want to, you've basically answered it, is could a, a professional wedding photographer use the RP? You know, I, I think so. I, I mean, so. I am. Um, he hasn't gone back since. I haven't gone back since. I, I like the images it's, it's pumping out. I, battery life hasn't been a problem. How's the quality of the images? Is there any noticeable difference between what you see in the RP and the 5D Mark III? For I mean, for me, I think it, it it's right in there. I mean, I'd like to get your input. You're way more um, technical savvy than I am. But I pixel peep. Yeah, you. Yeah, me. I look at it and say, oh, maybe there's some noise. But wait, I'm shooting at five thousand. Yeah. ISO, and so you know. You're ha you're happy with the ISO performance. Yeah. Here's the thing on the RP. In, and I've I posted this in my last video. It has some weaknesses. I'd mm -hmm. I'd love to know what you think the weaknesses are of it. But for a portrait and a wedding photographer that's where it's strong. It's very, very strong. I think Canon may have even made a mistake by pricing this camera mm -hmm. so low that adapts so well with other lenses mm -hmm. that if you wanted to shoot full frame as a portrait or wedding photographer, it's, it's never been cheaper. You know, you can use your old lenses. You can go mirrorless, save all that weight. What are some things you're noticing about your workflow? Do you take more pictures now because of eye off autofocus? Are they do you have more percentage in focus as your workflow speed speeded up? Yeah, or I, I think so. You know, I I I love to just shoot a lot and and kind of, you know, sp not spray and pray, but I I love to shoot, and then ask questions later. You know, I like to kind of wait for a, a candid scene to develop. I get my first shot to know that I've got the shot. Mm -hmm. I capture the moment, but stay and sit on it and 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 hunt and wait for that scene to develop and become something even more. So typically I'll shoot, you know, six to 10 seemingly of the same thing, really just looking for that that spark on the eye or a little bit of movement and mm -hmm. gesture. Um, and so in Lightroom, I'll go through and I'll heavy cull through them and delete seven of them mm -hmm. and just develop that that one that was kind of that fourth one in that series. Yep. Um, it makes the client think, oh my gosh, he's such a great photographer, but I was able to give <laughs> myself a little bit of room. They don't see the other ones. <laughs> um, so there is a lot of images that my clients never see um that's the way it should be yeah that's the way it should be yeah i just you know i i usually present 100 images for every hour of coverage um and 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 those 100 are are pushed in lightroom and got my own little set of presets that i i rock and uh yeah i'm super happy with the, the quality so what you're saying is like the shooting style it doesn't really change your workflow do, do you think the number of keepers have increased or not? yeah i would say it's harder for me when i go through calling them I'm like ooh. Mm. 
you know, I shoot in high burst mode. Yep. So uh, there is a little bit of, I don't know what was called sh lag when you mm -hmm. shoot it and it'll want to preview that shot. Yep. And sometimes I find that that's a bit distracting. So perhaps one of my um, techniques and not being distracted is I, I may just click another two mm -hmm. so that I'm constantly kind of seeing what the sensor is seeing instead yes. of that preview comes and you're like blinded for a second looking at that. Although I kind of like it sometimes. Oh, yeah. I like okay. it. I like not feeling for the playback button. I like to mm -hmm. confidence check and go instead of like pulling the camera away. Um, and, you know, sometimes the, the near sight vision is getting a little harder at my age. And so to see the screen is sometimes harder. So the, to be able to do it in the viewfinder mm -hmm. is Awesome. How has that transition been for you from going through? I don't even so like. Long. I don't even like holding it anymore. That big camera. <laughs> <laughs> but this is—is is this the first camera that you've owned that has an electronic viewfinder? Yes. So what? How do you like it more or less versus the old style DSLR? Love it. Because because I can do all my menu settings in the viewfinder and see you know what my ISO and you know I was pretty efficient in the viewfinder with my standard DSLR, but to be able to really get in and look at the detail and zoom in and see where I'm clipping and, and to see the detail in the viewfinder in bright Hawaii sun, yeah, ridiculous. And you get an exposure preview, yep. so you know where you are. Oh yeah, that's key, you know, is shooting super wide open like I do, you know, I, I like to kind of visualize like, Maybe that is too shallow that field. Maybe mm -hmm. I should close it down a little bit to yep. you know. And so that's cool to be able to see that preview. I've uh, I've noted there. I have. I'm left eyed dominant. Your right eye dominant. Yep. I think it's a better camera for right eyed shooters in terms of a general camera. But because of the eye detection, I think everybody can use the. If you're using a lot of eye detection, left eye, it's not going to bother left eyed portrait shooters as much if they're using that. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Ooh, the nose. I can't even do it. Nose problem. But I will say that when I go to vertical sometimes and my eye isn't at the same nested into the viewfinder as well. That relief. Mm -hmm. That sometimes the, the being able to change your, your focal point. Yep. It, the viewfinder is tricky where it knows if you're close or if you're far. It, yeah. And so if you're in vertical, sometimes just I'm <laughs> far enough away that it's not sure. Yeah. And I wonder if your left eye, if you get that all the time. The problem I had with my left eye is I kept bumping the uh, screen with my nose. Oh, yeah. And so the focusing score was changing. It was driving me crazy. Yeah. I made it so that this lock locks oh, the screen yeah. so that the nose wouldn't do something like that. If Interesting. What are some of the ergonomic things that you do not like? Or, you know, any? I, I've made a whole video about the ergonomics of these cameras, but what, are there any ergonomical things? We've talked about the weight. We've talked about the size. Those are advantages. I would say that um, the AF on button. Uh, no, this is good. Cool, the on off button. I, I mean the AF on. Yes. AF button. You, do you hit that? I hit that. Interesting. It's right where my thumb goes, and so if I'm talking to the client or helping w with you know posing or carrying something, and I go back to grab my camera, I'm constantly hitting that. Are you a back button focuser? No. Interesting. But I will say that I I've turned off the beep and because uh, I love how quiet it is, so I've like gone as quiet as I can make it, no beep. And typically I'm a beep. I was a beep shooter, sure. Um, but yeah. now I like being able to see the different color to know that green is one shot or blue is auto servo. That's so right. I just do a, a, a visual cue. I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's silent, which typically would have meant auto servo in my old life prior to yeah. um, mirrorless. But now I just really look for that you look for the the vi video or the visual confirmation to know which mode I'm shooting. Some photographers or pro photographers are paranoid about card failure single cards i mean i'm i'm par i got all kind of issues with, with this video isn't long enough for all the things i'm paranoid or anxious about have you I, ever had a card failure i in your 10 years of shooting i i even my 10 years before that shooting video you know we would go out and shoot with big broadcast mm -hmm. cameras shooting um a jvc format called d9 and it was an expensive camera back in the day i mean the car that i drove was cheaper than this camera and and these were the back in the days when you had one one thing and there was no second camera run and get it yeah. out of bag so yeah I, I take good care of my gear i'm i just know how it is and i i you know they're high mileage i have lots of clicks on them but i know that th th i take 
good care of them. And I know, and I knock on wood wherever I am to, to, <laughs> yeah. to, to hope that the cards don't fail, fail sure. me. I buy the best cards that I can, can get. Yep. Um, I don't shoot with super huge cards and I haven't had a problem. I wanna come back to this question about color science because there are a lot of people who believe color science is not a thing. I believe color science is a thing. I'm one of the believers in it, but I do not believe everybody can see it. I think it's certain people who can see it. And it's sort of like trying to prove if the moon is pretty. You, you know, it's an opinion. How can you prove something's beautiful or not? It's the same thing with color. How can you prove that this is good versus bad color science? And I have a definition for color science. You probably have your own definition for color science, but I tend to prefer Canon color science over the other ones. It, do you have a reason why you like it? Can you try to just explain it or just, just, just... It's just something to do with flesh tones and how the skin looks. <laughs> exactly. It's just more of a feeling thing for me yeah. than technical. What are some things that you do not like about the camera? What are the negatives that you say, this sucks about it? Okay, we talked about the need for a direct IAF on button. That'd be, that'd be epic. Uh, to be able to be um, in the same battery charging space, I've invested a lot of money in the other batteries. It'd be rad if it yeah. was like, oh yeah, just plug in your old battery system. That would have been, that yeah. would have been cool. Sure. Um, I had a lot of compact flashcards. It would have been nice if, you know. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm adapting to the SD card nicely. It's all good. Um, you seem pretty happy with it. Dude, I love this little camera. I, I love... Um, how quickly I can move my focus points on the back. Mm -hmm. I, you know, with my thumb, I'm boom, boom. Yep. I, I, the other day, you know, shooting, you know, bridal party all gathered up and shooting high with the with the screen out to the side. Something you can't with do with Super the high. Yep. That was pretty rad. Yeah. And tip, I, I believe that sharing is caring. So oftentimes <laughs> I'll have the bride and groom kind of snuggle in and I'll have the groom hold the camera and do a selfie with all his bridal party all tucked mm -hmm. around. Yeah. And before I just kind of would click it into, I'd set it manual and click the focus to manual and just kind of get it in space, you know, shoot super wide 16 yeah. millimeters. And now, you know, to be able to, to be able to do it kind of myself and kind of get up super high and get in there with that, that's pretty cool to be able to do that. And low, you know, when I'm dragging two bodies on me, Sometimes it's hard to really crouch and kind of, or sit down and stand back up from sitting. So I'm more of a crouch yep. kind of guy. So be able to crouch down and get that. So you like the monitor? The monitor's pretty red. You like the touch screen? I'm good with it. Hmm. I, tur I I'm a disabled, I will say that sometimes the touch shutter, the touch shutter the sometimes crazy. enables, but I wish that would go away. <laughs> yeah, sure. Lock, lock that. I wish it was a, I'm more of a button and dial kind of guy than menu things. See, here's the thing is we, is the conclusion that I've come to. And I think the conclusion that Scotty's coming to, to is that the RP is a professional portrait camera. Professional just means you make money on it. You, and you're a, this is your full-time job and you're using them three times a week. Have your customers come back to you and said, you use the Canon RP no, on this. No, but I will say that that's one concern of mine. I've heard something about these being available maybe at Costco one day. Yep. And that would be frightening for me to see the Uncle Bob at the yep. wedding roll up yeah. and, he, and he's shooting something more expensive yeah. than me. And they're like, wait, isn't that the kit camera we can get at Costco? <laughs> and I'll be like, oh. And there are some rumors that it's coming. It's a, it, there are rumors that a, that, that it's speculation. Nobody knows for sure. There might be like a five hundred or six hundred dollar full frame. They there there is some belief, but who knows? But a, a thousand, I think it's twelve hundred, twelve ninety nine, something like that, is ridiculous. Right. Uh, you and I both know there's so much more that goes into it than just the camera. You know, there's the composition, there's the lighting, there's the knowledge of the framing, there is the the people skills. All these things come into play, and uh, you know, so I. I believe, you know, in, in wedding photographers for a time, they were worried about uh, cell phones. How good are cell phones yeah. become? Some of them are yeah. becoming pretty good. Yeah. But most wedding parties still hire a real photographer for their wedding. There's a reason. The sensor's larger. It's going to be, there's, there are advantages to that. Better lenses, better glass, better colors. Have you tried it for sport, any kind of sports focusing? You said you do some windsurfing and stuff. Did, did you try it to shoot sports? Uh, no. I haven't gone out there and, and shoot um, any any at water sports yet. Um, doves flying, you know, dove relief release. Um, maybe a flower petal toss as bride and groom are coming right at me. That's probably the most sport I've gotten. And I will say that it sometimes has a hard time finding and locking on that focus. I've noticed that too. 
it's not a sports shooting camera. It just yeah. isn't. Yeah. It, the frames per second are low, and I don't think it's up there in yeah. terms of its ability. So, in any event, we want to say thank you to Scott for coming and sharing his thoughts. If you guys are interested in his work, check him out on Instagram at Scott Drexler. Where's your website? ScottDrexler.com. ScottDrexler.com. If you or somebody you know is looking for a world-class wedding photographer, he is your man. If you guys enjoyed this discussion on the Canon RP as a wedding camera, I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Check out some of my free videos and the camera straps. Those links are also there as well. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Aloha.